to Dr. Blackhurst's Back to History Valley podcast. And today he is going to be talking about the Gospel of Barnabas. And I happen to have it right here in my library, my copy of the Gospel of Barnabas. And it says all kinds of strange things. Um, oh, it does. Judas Iscariot was crucified instead of Jesus. And that's really strange. And I definitely have plenty of questions for you about the Gospel of Barnabas. But before we even touch on Judas Iscariot, um, when this specific date, there is a huge divide in scholarship on, on about when this book was written. It is agreed by all scholars. It definitely dates centuries after the New Testament was composed, many centuries. Yes. But when exactly? Yeah, okay. Uh, yeah, yeah, that's a very difficult question. Um, it appears the extant text, the extant text, is from, gee, it's fairly late, you know, it's in from the 1590s. The 1590s wow. is when it appears. So it's counted in, in biblical areas as modern apocrypha. It's a modern book, but the text itself tells us clearly contains material that seems to be from the 1300s. Hmm. There's so, certainly some material that, that seems to be, you could date from that. Um, so the time of composition seems to be much earlier, but then it's also a composite document. It's clearly a composite document. It's uh, been woven together from earlier materials and um, the dates of those earlier materials is very, very difficult to establish. Mm. And uh, some of it is certainly medieval. And I refer to the gospel of Barnabas as a medieval work. It's a medieval, the medieval gospel of Barnabas. And that's to distinguish it from any ancient gospel of Barnabas. I think that there was an ancient gospel of Barnabas. And uh, it's very difficult to say what the relationship between, but is between that ancient work and the work that we now have, except to say that they're not one and the same, and that the ancient gospel of Barnabas is thoroughly lost. We don't have any, um, we don't have any trace of it whatsoever. Um, although we do have two references to it. So I think it did exist. Some people think it didn't because we just don't have any, anything of it. Um, so, but on, on, Complicating that are the, is the fact that some people, particularly uh, Muslim uh, polemicists, will tell you that the ancient, that the Gospel of Barnabas as we have it, is the ancient Gospel of Barnabas, and therefore it's an ancient work and it goes back to the apostles, to the apostolic age. Mm -hmm. um, I think that that's that's a, an entirely unsustainable point of view, but you'll get it in religious. Um, religious debates. Mm. I've heard that you found out who actually wrote the Gospel of Barnabas that we have. Is that true? The, the, is there, do we know who wrote the, our version of the uh, Gospel of Barnabas? Yeah, we know, we know who, we know who, uh, who put it together. Okay. We know who, or, or let's say we know who, who brought it into the public domain and we know why he brought it into the public domain and we know that he prepared the two existing copies for a particular purpose and that, that that's why they have survived. Um, we also know that he is responsible for writing the preface that goes with the Spanish version and uh, but but whether he is responsible for writing it or having it written seems unlikely to me it's much earlier material um he may have had it composed from existing material but i don't think so i think it it was an, a pre-existing document that he's dressed up so who um, is this person yeah this person is uh cardinal santorio <laughs> his name his name is uh santorio he's uh he's a uh, bishop um, in that particular period and uh, we know his his motives and we know wh wh what happened uh, you can work it out I, I spent years putting it together but I, you can work it out and of course once you see it it becomes very obvious what happened cardinal santorio was uh, he worked for the inquisition he was an inquisitor and a very powerful one and uh, he worked for uh, king philip of spain and uh, 
the context here is that he was cheated out of the papacy. He he lost the papacy by one vote. And uh, as an inquisitor, what he decided to do was to weaponize an existing, I think this is what happened. He, he decided to weaponize an existing heretical document to incriminate his enemies and to protect himself too. He has particular motives. We can work it out very carefully. The two documents were prepared for King Philip of Spain. I think that, mm. I, yeah, I, you know, I think that that's very clear. She's on an emotional rampage trying to say, well, you guys got it all wrong. It was Jesus Iscariot that was crucified. It says here, it says it here right in this text I'm showing you. Mm. Oh, look at this. It even predicts that Muhammad is coming. Mm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's a big, because the context of this, the context of this is uh, wars, wars between Spain and Turkey with with the the church and italy is sort of the the meat in the sandwich in the, the in in between um so you've got to understand that context it's a very mm. there's a the, i think that this document comes into europe after the battle of lepanto the battle of mm. lepanto is one of the most important events in european history it's when uh, you know uh, the the dividing line between the islamic and the european world was um, redrawn uh, in the 1570s and i think that uh, um, the gospel of barnabas comes into europe at that time but then it's picked up by the inquisition mm. and uh it's it's it sits in the property it's the property of the inquisition although it comes in with other books and santorio doesn't have those other books he only has the gospel of barnabas although he knows where the other books are but he just can't get at them. That's another motive here. And mm. so what he's got here is, is probably the most heretical document you could possibly imagine. This is, this is a work of, uh, this is a work of sedition. This is a work of, this is the Islamic gospel. This is a work of a, a heretic and a turncoat and um, uh, a work of apostasy. You know, it's, it's a heresy of heresies. It's the hottest piece of heresy he, Santorio could find and uh, he writes a preface and he tries to incriminate his enemies with it and that's why it, that's otherwise we would never have known it it was in the possession of the inquisition it uh, but Santorio um, in it was in the en enclave of uh, 1592 um, the, the conclave of 1592 rather the um, the papal election of 1592, Santorio was the Spanish candidate. He was the candidate for King Philip of Spain. And uh, he thought it, he, he had it in the bag. He thought he had had the votes. And so he went into the conclave expecting to win. And uh, very famously, he lost by one vote. And um, he was betrayed in the conclave by the Colonna family, by the Colonna brothers, Mark Antonio, uh, Colonna in particular, Asconio and uh, Mark Antonio Colonna were both uh, cardinals and they voted against him. They voted him down. He lost the papacy. And so, yeah, in a, a fit of fury, but also to defend himself, his, his enemies have just won the papacy. He's got to defend himself. So he, he pulls out of storage the hottest piece of heresy he could find. And uh, he dresses it up to incriminate his enemies. And that's why it comes into the public domain. And the only reason why it comes into the public domain and why it seems such a strange book. This is a book we were never supposed to see. So we got a pretty good idea of where our version of the Gospel of Barnabas came from and the, and the dating of it. Mm. As for the ancient version, if you yep. had to, if you had to give an educated guess as to when the ancient version was written, which century would you place it in? Yeah, I'd place it in the fifth century, and I and, and the place I'd place it is either in Syria or in Cyprus. The Barnabian tradition, the tradition that this material comes out of, you can retrace it from the medieval Gospel of Barnabas. You can retrace that material. It goes from Italy back to Cyprus and then from Cyprus to Syria. 
So it's an ancient Syrian tradition. And uh, around about the fourth century and fourth, fifth century, 400s, it goes to Cyprus. And I think in that period is when a gospel of Barnabas is likely to have been written. And uh, certainly the Acts of Barnabas are written at that time. That book, that's a very important book. And our existing Gospel of Barnabas is written to cater to notices in the Acts of Barnabas, which is part of the Barnabian tradition in the Church of Cyprus. And that then moves into Italy at a later date. Yeah. I think we can trace all of this now. Hmm. So, so, so the ancient one, the ancient Gospel of Barnabas predates the Quran, and does that so that means the Muhammad pr prophecy was added in later? Yeah, um, that's right. Does that are we, is, was it probably added in there by the guy we just talked about earlier? When he yeah, that's right. Uh, no, no, no. That's an interesting question. When did it become a Muslim document? When did it become yeah. Islam Islamified? Because it wasn't originally. That's right. Mm -hmm. The ancient the ancient Gospel of Barnabas wasn't about uh, Muhammad. It was before mm -hmm. Muhammad. Um, uh, but somehow or other, this sort of material has survived, and it survived in the Cyprus environment. So that Turkish Cypriot environment and uh, at some stage it becomes an islamic document it becomes an islamic um, gospel and the way that that happens the way that that happens because we can tell we can reverse it we can we can remove the islamic layer you can remove the islamic stuff from the gospel of barnabas there are scholars who deny that you can do that but i think that you very clear that you can do it for instance um What's originally there, we can work it out. What's originally there is um, is the formation of, you know, uh, the forerunner prophesying the Messiah. You've got uh, John the Baptist prophesying Jesus. That's the that's the one we're familiar with. John the Baptist is the forerunner to the Messiah who I, he identifies as Jesus. What they do is they just, someone has just swapped the names here. Someone's just swapped the names. Instead of, instead of John, it becomes Jesus. And instead of uh, Jesus, it becomes Muhammad. And you just slit, slot Jesus Muhammad into those roles, forerunner and Messiah, even though that's ill-fitting. Um, because, of course, Muslims don't believe that Muhammad is the Messiah. That's not an Islamic belief. But somebody has picked this book up and Islamified it. They've turned it into a Muslim gospel. When? It's very hard to say. But I don't think it was Santorio. I don't think it was Cardinal Santorio. It was, it was done before that. And that's why it is such a hot, hot property in his hands and why it is, he can weaponize it so much. If he can attach that document to his enemies, the Colonna, the Colonna family, then they're in serious trouble. But as it happens, it seems he, he, he uh, the documents are prepared for King Philip of Spain and King Philip of Sa Spain doesn't seem to have bought into it because nothing seemed to have happened. The, the conspiracy is prepared, but it's never deployed. And it's kind of hilarious to me that Muslims use this document as, oh, this is the final proof of the Quran. Yeah, um, they do. But it actually, as you were just bringing up a moment ago, it portrays Muhammad as a Messiah, which actually contradicts the Quran. Yeah, the, the, the author of the Gospel of Barnabas, or whoever's done this, he doesn't actually know very much about uh, Islam. He knows a bit. He knows the prayers. He doesn't know the Quran. He, th there's no evidence in the document that he that he's familiar with the Quran, um, and uh, he doesn't really understand Islamic monotheism, and he certainly doesn't understand Islamic prophetology. He doesn't understand. Uh, Muhammad's not n not a messiah, although you know there are here and there there are small communities of syncretic groups that might might propose that, but. Uh, that's uh, that's not a mainstream Muslim belief at all. No. So it seems like the 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 interpolator of the Muhammad stuff 
was very confused and ignorant. Yeah, that's right. Um, we can, we can, like, if you remove that, let's try to work out what he was like, this author. He, he's familiar with Judaism, Christianity, and Islam, but in order, he, he knows Christianity best, he knows Judaism second best, and he knows Islam third best. Um, so he's very, very good and very familiar with and very adept with uh, the Hebrew scriptures with Old Testament, Old Testament prophecy, and he knows the gospels really, really well. I mean, very, very well uh, to the point that you think he must have scribal, um, he must be an educated, must be very well educated in that area. But when it comes to Islam, he has a secondhand uh, familiarity with Islam. He has, uh, you, I think you can safely say that he hasn't lived in a Muslim environment for any period of time. Mm. So he's a Christian, a Jewish Christian, who has a faulty understanding of Islam. Whether he subscribes to Islam in fact or not is another matter, whether it's actually written by a convert, uh, that's, and that seems to be how it's presented, it's written by a convert. Mm. But a lot of converts don't know much about what they're converting to and they learn over a period of time. Um, in the beginning, he, he doesn't seem, at the time of writing, he doesn't seem to know very much about Islam. Well, okay. Well, it there. Uh, thank you, Dr. Blockhurst. Um, I think at some point in the future, if I can think of uh, other things to talk about regarding the Gospel of Barnabas, I'd like to do another yeah. episode with you in the future on this. Sure, yeah, that's all right. That's all right, Jacob. Yeah, I'm always happy. Hello, viewers. Thanks for watching this video from the History Valley YouTube channel. Please don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell. And if any of you wish to further support this channel, please consider checking out this channel's Patreon page and becoming a patron, and or donate through PayPal or through Super Chat during a live stream. Thank you.